Welcome to date night. We've moved outdoors for date night because haven't we all wanted to get outdoors a little bit more than we have been? Tonight I've got a uh, bison flank steak. Now, flank steak, um, and especially bison flank steak, it's a little bit leaner. Um, it's kind of sinewy, so you want to, it's, it's, to me, flank steak isn't necessarily at its best at medium rare. I like it a little bit closer to medium. Seems to be a little less, less toothy that way. Um, and I've got a couple different ways that I'm going to do it. I've got sous vide flank steak. I've got some marinated flank steak. And then I've got just, I'm just going to pound it and season it. And I'm going to see if one is more tender than the other. Now, for a lot of people who don't have bison flank steak, the reason I do is because I do a lot of appearances and a lot of small jobs and things like that for people that want to taste a little bit of different wild game. So um, as I worked my way through the freezer during the pandemic, um, I got to a big pile of bison flank steak. So if I was going to be feeding you bison flank steak this week somewhere in the United States, you can experience it vicariously through Sportsman Channel's Facebook. I have a couple shows on Sportsman Channel. One is called The Sporting Chef. That's just me and a bunch of very notable people cooking regular old fish and game. I also have a show called Dead Meat, where we do some of the critters less eaten. Um, python, by the way, don't eat the python. Python's not any good. Nutria, this big swamp rat, we've got them in California now. I'm gonna go after them in Oregon is my plan for the coming up dead meat season. But as always on date night, I like to start the night with a little cocktail. Got a shaker with some ice. This is Drop Tine Moonshine. And it has apricot and a persimmon and apple. That's enough of that. So um, in a recent dead meat show that we did in West Virginia at the Roadkill Festival, um, I almost died it's a bit of an exaggeration, while drinking about 12 or 15 shots of moonshine as I was working, working my way through the festival, that is Limeaid. I didn't know I had Limeaid in the freezer. There's some lime, but I'm guessing that was from one of my wife's little get-togethers. I've got a little sugar. So I've got lime, Limeaid sugar, just a little bit of water, and some orange. And yes, they did have orange, oddly enough, at the grocery store. This is going to be my moonshine arita. This is Hawaiian pink salt and sugar. Take in the rim of the glass, rub a little fresh lime around the limb, around the rim. Then you dunk it into that sugar salt combo. Shake this up. Pour that over. This is my moonshine arita. And hopefully, while I've been making my moonshine arita, you guys have come up with a drink of your own. A little lime, a little fresh orange, and um, you know what I don't do on the regular Sporting Chef show is um, eat or drink whatever I cook. <laughs> um, that's going to make cooking that much better. And the reason, people always ask me, they go, why don't you eat the food that you cook on TV? And I've mentioned this a time or two that I find it a little annoying to watch people eat. Um, and I've, have you ever seen anybody on TV not swoon or have their knees buckle because they ate something that they just cooked? And it just happened to be the best thing ever in the entire universe. Well, I'm not buying any of that. At some point, it's going to need a little bit of an adjustment. So, as I mentioned, I've got bison flank three ways. That's just a hunk of bison flank there. Now, if you want to tenderize this, a um, couple different options. I want to trim some of this grisly part off here first. And one of the really, really important things with bison flank or any kind of meat is, and it's really, really obvious with bison, you see the grain runs this way. 
So if I was, after I cook this, if I was to slice it with the grain, it would be really, really tough because we, we're cutting with, we're pulling with the connective tissue. If instead you cut across the grain at an angle like this, it, the same piece of meat will eat so much more tender uh, than if you cut it along the grain. Whether it's a tri-tip or a flank steak or whatever, always go across the grain when you serve it. There's a tenderizer right here. If you've got a whole bunch of, whole bunch of jobs, so what this has is little flat blades on there. And as you push down on it, um, it flattens it out. This one is made by Victor. This one is made by Jacquard. This is the one that a lot of people see most often. Um, you shouldn't pay more than about 20 bucks for one of these. So if you go to one of them fancy stores and they've got them for 40 bucks, put 20 bucks in your pocket um, and look around. Even Amazon is going to be cheaper. So you can go this way with it. That one does the same thing, it's just a little more messy. So if I had a big pile of flank steak and I was feeding a whole bunch of people, I could take this guy and whale on it. These guys are also really good for tougher meats, like Canada goose breast. You get a big, giant, greater Canada. And a lot of times, if you look at if you look at meat, or if you see, let's say, sirloin on the steak that you get at the grocery store, um, a lot of times it will be jacarded. Uh, and what that does, it does little needly things and it breaks uh, up the connective tissue. I'm just gonna season this with some high mountain rib rub, which is one of my favorites. You know, if you're gonna be making fajitas, we'll put a little taco seasoning. High Mountain also makes a fajita seasoning um, that, um, I need to order more of because I used it up. So there's rib rub, and the rib rub will give it some nice color. And this is High Mountain Taco Seasoning because we're using what's on hand. When we get out of this mess, one of the things I'm gonna have to do is let High Mountain know that I'm gonna have to order some more of the seasoning. I'm gonna put this, this will be the first one. It's gonna go into the woodwind over here. So, number one, pounded to tenderize. Number two, all right, so Food Saver makes a marinator that is um, under pressure here. If you can hear that, what this does is it greatly speeds up the marinating time. I mean, just an hour or two in this, in the marinade, and all this marinade is, this is lime juice. I've got lime juice, I've got some high mountain seasoning, some lemon uh, and onion and garlic, and that's it. This is ready to go again. This has been marinated with the Food Saver Marinator. Next one. Now the third flank steak variation is sous vide. So again, using a Food Saver bag, and you know, to do the sous vide, and while this really is, it's a controlled temperature water bath. Um, you can use a zipper lock type bag and then kind of clip it to the side. And the problem is it keeps floating up. There's things you can do to pull a lot of the air out. If you put the Ziploc bag in and you um, leave it open while you put it in water, it squeezes the air out, then you seal it. But there's no substitute for a vacuum seal so that it sinks to the bottom and doesn't float. This has been at 125 degrees um, for about three hours. Um, and we'll see how much more tender this is. I should be able to feel how tender it is just by the texture of the meat. You know, it feels a little more tender. So this is bison flank number three. All right, let me switch out a little bit and go from bison to duck. Bison is doing its thing for now. Now I'm going to show you how to cook duck and goose. This is a uh, speckled goose, a couple of speckled goose breasts. Um, and because goose breasts are so thick, 
I mean, picture a big Canada goose breast, how thick they are. If you throw it on a grill, it's really hard to control the temperature because very often what will happen is that it's going to be overdone on the outside before it's done on the inside. I like the internal temperature on my ducks and geese to be about 130, 135. Um, if you wanted to tenderize this, you could too. I'm going to put it skin side down, but first it's going to need a little seasoning, and why not just use the High Mountain Rib Rub. This is going to be a balsamic berry sauce, and I'm using huckleberry, huckleberry jam. This is huckleberry jam that I got from Michael Allen. You need to check this stuff out. This is huckleberry haven. Now, he told me, once you try this, you're never going to want any other kind of jelly or jam. And he's right. And I got a bunch of it, so I've been sharing this with my neighbors. And if you look, what you get in this, you get actual huckleberries, not just, um, you know, a little puree of whatever. That's really good. That's mostly huckleberries. So that's going to be with balsamic vinegar. You got something sweet like huckleberry jam. You want to balance it with something a little bit sour. Got a skillet over here. I'm going to put a little olive oil in there. Then I'm going to drop my goose breasts. You don't want to overcook these goose breasts, so I'm going to keep my eye on it. Let me know if you see flames coming out of that skillet. I'll get back to the goose breasts in a minute. Meanwhile, I did a little more cleaning out. I'm going to make a little salad to go with my, my, uh, my bison and my duck. Those are beets. My wife went to Trader Joe's or Costco or something and bought 800 pounds of beets, which is infinitely more than you'll ever need. So I've been working through these beets for the last couple of months. I've got some canned artichoke hearts. You know, I like to use artichoke hearts in dips and things. It kind of, you can cut down on the calories a little bit if you're making a dip. Throw in a bunch of chopped up artichoke hearts. But before I go too much farther, I'm going to flip my goose breast. And this same recipe that I'm doing with the goose breast, you can do the very same thing um, with venison, any kind of antlered game. Here's a little celery for crunch. Here's a few left, a few tomatoes I have left. Here is some green onion, jalapeno. If you don't like it, if you don't like spicy, if you don't like jalapeno, and I happen, I use a lot of jalapenos because they're they're really really mild. A little red bell pepper for color. By the way, these are the only bell peppers they had at the store. They just had these little guys here. Garlic chips. Some Dijon mustard. Just a little bit of sugar. Olive oil. And some of my favorite vinegar. This is from the Lodge. These guys are in Sonoma. Uh, these are gun-friendly uh, wine and vinegar makers here. Check out the Lodge. Salt. Mix it up. All right. I got to get these goose breasts out of here. Those are done. I can tell they've been in there long enough. I'll show you what the color is on these goose breasts. See that? That's what it should look like. That's rare to medium rare. This freaks some people out. Um, I've been writing for a number of magazines for years, and I had one edit editor that always insisted that I overcook the, uh, the ducks, but I didn't want to do that. So I think they would color correct it once they got it to the magazine. Here's my salad I'm going to put. Oh, yeah. I had some chopped macadamia nuts. So we'll put that in there. And again, if you're looking for a recipe for this particular dish here, you won't find it anywhere. This is our pandemic salad. Little, put a little color in there. All right, let me check on my bison. 
So I cranked up the temperature to 325, somewhere around there. What I like what Camp Chef has done, they've added features that you don't see on a normal pellet grill. And one of them is this side kick that once I get this, um, the, the, once I get the bison out of the pellet grill itself, it's going to go on the side kick to sear it. It's going to post sear. Meanwhile, let me show you how I make the balsamic huckleberry sauce. About that much balsamic vinegar, about that much of the huckleberry preserves. If you don't happen to have the huck huckleberry jam in your refrigerator, use whatever's in the door, any kind of jelly. You just want to balance the acidic vinegar, the sour vinegar with the sweet whatever, and then adjust. Adjust it to your own taste. Right when it's all reduced, whisk in some chilled butter, and that's going to smooth out the sauce and give it a real mellow, smooth little edge to it. This is not going to be about, about presentation, of course. Otherwise, I would have a starch and a vegetable on there. We'll just kind of shingle these guys on here again. This is speckled goose, which here in Northern California, those of us who hunt specks, it's been on fire. The speck hunting has been super, super good, um, which surprises a lot of people. One of the questions that I get asked often as I'm traveling the country is people, when I say, yeah, we duck hunt in California, <laughs> in California, they go, what, California? Um, we're usually in the top three in the country on waterfowl harvest. And then people say, well, what kind of ducks do you shoot? We don't shoot as many mallards as they do in Arkansas and Louisiana, but we shoot a fair amount. We also shoot a lot of teal, and we shoot a lot of widgeon. And yeah, we even shoot spoonies here. And for those of you snobby people that say you don't eat spoonies, well, I just want you to know that I've served you spoonies a whole bunch of times. You just didn't know it. Let me show you this whole sidekick deal and why I like these Camp Chef woodwinds more than the other pellet grills. Watch this. Sous vide. Marinade. Pounded and tenderized. This sous vide one is definitely done. I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. Of course, this was already cooked, but it's still really juicy. This was already cooked to 125 before I put it on. The other ones had a little catch up, and this is what I don't like to do on TV, but I'm going to anyway. The sous vide one is really tender. Again, my knees didn't buckle. It tastes good, but it needs salt. So for those guys on TV who go all nuts over their own food, even when it needs salt, well, mine needs salt. Next up, and you can tell by how firm it is, my buddy Greg Cornell, um, who I catered with for many, many years, Silver Sage Caterers, we catered lots of Ducks Unlimited, California Waterfowl, Turkey Federation banquets all over the place. Um, he knows what a perfectly cooked tri-tip looks like. Okay, super, super juicy. So that is pounded. That's sous vide. Now let me check the one I did with the Food Saver Marinator. And this one's plumped up a bit. So I'm gonna go off the end here and I'll give it a taste. It's good. Um, the flavor on this one is a little more pronounced. Let me see what I can do with this. I have canned salsa. This is a staple item for me. I find this at my local Rayleigh's in Bel Air. Um, at first I thought this can't be any good. It's like a buck 40 a can, but it's very shape, shelf stable. Um, and you'll find, let's say, if you don't have diced tomatoes, you can use this canned salsa too. Uh, let me see how I can make this possibly look like something. 
we'll just do that. Let's see here, a little avocado. How's your date night going so far? What about you, dogs? We've got Floyd over here, Max sleeping. Mac and Floyd went for a long walk today. Now I've got avocado on my shirt, on my chef coat. There's a little avocado. We won't be going for presentation on this one. See, see, this fire roasted canned salsa. Here's a little queso fresco. And I think I might have even, yes I did. That cilantro at the store. Big hunk of cilantro. All right, I got rid of a bunch of flank steak. I'm gonna be eating this flank steak. We'll, we will be eating this. This will be sandwiches. Who knows what this will end up with. We've learned to become very creative during the current pandemic or the only pandemic that we've lived through. It's kind of weird, right? What we're starting to feel like maybe it's time to get out there. I did manage to go play golf this week. Um, they, you had to ride in one cart. You couldn't sit next to anybody. But it sure felt good to get out. And I want you to get out too. Enjoy date night. Keep drinking. The food's going to taste better. Make sure you tell each other you love each other because you've been cooped up for a long time. I know I need a haircut. And if I don't stop eating, I'm never going to be able to fit into the chef coat when I go back to work. It's date night. I'm Scott Layseth, the sporting chef, and I appreciate you sticking with me tonight. Have a great date night.